tell us about yourself in 60 seconds or less. Oh, well, mum to Gabriel, daughter, descendant of Ngāti Ngāti Nui, Tauranga Moana Iwi, Bay of Plenty born and bred, Bay of Plenty hard, um, governor, background in governance, board member, chairperson, Māori kiwi fruit grower in the high value hort sector, food and fibre, weaver, political candidate, Labour, Labour candidate for the Bay of Plenty, MP support, all round good person. Why run for MP now in 2023? Well, 2023, I think it is a time where we're living in a, a kind of a new age at the moment. We're post-COVID, we're post-mandate. Uh, a lot has gone on in the world in the last three years. So I feel like there's a level of, I'll, I'll call it innocence, but there's a level of um, naivety that's sort of no longer there. And the, not just in Aotearoa, New Zealand, the Bay of Plenty, but in the world. So I feel it's an ideal time actually, an opportune time to move forward out of COVID, out of the mandates, out of all of that and advance forward on a new path. So, you know, we've, we've seen Jacinda retire and leave Parliament. And I think, again, under a new leadership, under the leadership of Chris Hipkins, I think it's an exciting time to be a new la Labour candidate for the Bay of Plenty. What are some of the biggest issues in your electorate for you? For me, of course, well, the Bay of Plenty, of course, we're part of the Golden Triangle, uh, Tauranga, Bay of Plenty, Hamilton, Auckland. We have the biggest and most efficient port in the country, and we manage over 90% of the exports that, that come through Port of Tauranga. So I think one of the two of the core issues here in the Bay of Plenty, and they don't sound sexy at all, but they are, you know, this is the real issues. So infrastructure is one and housing is the other one, infrastructure around not just roading, we're not just talking about potholes and the tar seal on the roads, but infrastructure connected to the development of housing, for example, um, affordable water management, so wastewater, stormwater, drinking water, power, energy to power up development for housing. Um, housing in particular in the Bay of Plenty because there are issues around the lack of affordability of housing. Uh, we have issues with homelessness, people sleeping in cars, sleeping in vehicles. I know this through my work in the electorate community office that we still have people coming in, presenting, a lot from other regions actually, but heading to the Bay of Plenty, seeking a better way of life. So those are two of the core issues for us here. Um, also, I've got a background in the high value horticulture industry or in, in kiwi fruit in particular. So for us, climate change is a massive one in terms of our industry and the impacts on our, our crops and our, you know, our um, ability to be able to maintain and keep creating and building on that intergenerational prosperity that we rely on our kiwi fruit for. So those are three of the big ones for me here. The region grinds to a halt every rush hour, but no one really wants to take a bus or an alternate mode of transport. So can we f afford to just keep building roads? What, what needs to change, do you think? Mm, I think a lot needs to change. And really this does come down to the thinking of constituents and when they're considering how they vote and who they vote for, including the, both the candidate and the party. Um, you know, I spent four years living in Japan teaching English after my university graduation. Even in the most remote parts of Japan, 20 years ago, they had things like monorails, they had bullet trains, subways, regular above ground light rail, all of those sorts of things. And yet here in Aotearoa in New Zealand in 2023, um, yeah, the focus on just only building roads or patching up roads is, it's not enough for a modern country. But in my mind, that's actually about a a mindset shift in the minds of voters. 
So, you know, if we want better, we deserve better, which we do, I feel we do, then we have to be willing to do differently to get those outcomes. Youth crime is in the news a lot lately. What's the solution there? Again, like housing, like infrastructure, I don't think there is just one single solution. I think in terms of crime relating to young people nowadays, there needs to be a multi-agency, multi-level number of approaches, so not just one. So whatever that looks like, um, I'm thinking it must involve addressing the root causes of young people, whether they're falling through the system, whether they're subject to whatever their environmental circumstance is that they've grown up in. Um, we need to address those things at the beginning of the cycle, because I think at the moment, um, punitive responses to youth offenders I don't believe that's the answer because really all you're doing is growing a pipeline into potentially becoming adult perpetrators of crime. That's the thing that we want to cut off. So I believe that that requires a number of approaches from a number of agencies working together, not in silos. But what about, you know, what about the people that are, aren't kids anymore and are still out there or aren't necessarily teenagers mm. or, you know, the ones that are kind of already gone down, they've already, they're already on this path. What, what yeah. can we do about those guys that are out there ram raiding, robbing malls, jewellers? Like what, yeah. you know, what is it, is it, do they need stricter punishments to pull mm. them off or is that just not working? Adult offenders, well, I think that's it. Basically, the justice system deals with them right now. So, you know, I think youth offenders is where the, the opportunities lie to be able to respond to them in a different way to hopefully be able to get different outcomes that prevent them from becoming adult offenders. The cost of living is affecting everybody, some more than others. What tangible things can government do in this area? I feel like um, government is actually doing some tangible things already. So the winter energy payment, for example, that's putting extra dollars in people's back pocket and helping to relieve the pressure of uh, the cost of living at this time. Uh, Subsidised public transport fares, the free prescriptions, the um, doing away with the $5 fee on prescriptions, things like that small incremental things that are going some way towards assisting people with relieving the pressure of the cost of living. How can we engage more young people to be interested in local politics, national politics? How, how can we reach the younger generation? I think in the immediate future, just ahead of elections, I think it's about all of the candidates getting out there and being active and engaging with uh, youth audiences, young people, and that's not just young people sort of 18, 19, but right up even into the 20s, early 30s potentially. Uh, longer term, I, I am a, um, a supporter of or a proponent for within the curriculum uh, building in compulsory democratic civics as a you know a compulsory subject at school because really and we see this again through my role in the community electorate office that even your average adult is not necessarily aware of what the differences are between a list MP and an electorate MP the difference between the two votes so the candidate vote which is basically a first past the post vote versus a party vote, which is the MMP component of MMP. Um, so really it is, it is about increasing education across the board. For youth, I think that can be done by entrenching it into a curriculum. And for everybody else, um, across the board, just more engagement, community engagement right now. If elected, what's the first thing, the top of the list that you would do for the electorate? Ah, well, first, top of the list, um, again, infrastructure, housing. So I understand that Minister Megan Woods and Minister 
I think Minister McAnulty as well. Um, at least Minister Woods are part of the Smart Growth Leadership Forum. So I would want to engage with them and to continue to promote and advocate for strongly for the speedy development of our infrastructure and housing in the Greater Bay of Plenty.